Hey everybody, Tim Evanicki here with the College Audition, back again with another episode of the College Audition podcast, here today with my special guest, Richard Gray, head of the musical theater program at Cornish College. Thanks so much for joining us today, Mr. Gray. I am very happy to be here. So Richard, first thing, we always like to get to know the person before the program. So if you could give us a little bit about your career and background and the series of events that led up to your time at Cornish College. Sure. I am a composer, actor, director based in the Seattle uh, area. I uh, went to the University of Oregon back in the 80s and, uh, and um, immediately went uh, into the profession. And I have had great success in both Seattle and then I have written several shows that have been performed around the country um, as a composer lyricist. Um, but my main career has been in acting and directing, and I began uh, my teaching career about 10 years ago here at Cornish College of the Arts as an adjunct professor, and, uh, and then became core faculty, and now I'm heading the musical theater program. So it's been a home base and a place that I just love and have really enjoyed um, seeing our students grow and flourish. Beautiful. And you are relatively a newly minted head of the musical theater program. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, we, uh, until about three years ago, we had a, a, a theater degree with a musical theater emphasis. And then we began uh, the musical theater major program. And with that, we've uh, been uh, uh, building, building up both the faculty and uh, the vigor of the program itself. So, yes. That's really exciting. Yeah, that's really exciting for you guys. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot uh, then. We, I, well, I put all of my guests on the spot at this point and ask you for your elevator pitch. So 60 seconds or less, why oh. should students choose Cornish College for their musical theater training? I love doing this. Uh, Cornish is really a program for uh, expanding the individual artist. Um, we, I, I, many schools say they're not a cookie cutter program. I feel like we not only talk the talk, but we walk the walk and we, uh, we look at you as an individual artist, figure out what are the things that make you special? What are the things that, um, that, that can make you both marketable, but also, uh, an artist that can change the world. We, we, we our motto at, at Cornish is, uh, artist, citizen, innovator, because we not only think of you as as a, a person who can, you know, nail the dance call or nail the music call, but a person that can change the art form. And those are the kind of students that really flourish here at Cornish. Those are the students that want to come here because I feel like they get seen mm -hmm. as who they are and not yeah. just that person that can get an A in the class. Great. Well done. And I think that was under 60 seconds. It's not often <laughs> that the guests do that in under 60 seconds. Well, I can get uh, more details, so, I won't right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the rest of the podcast is about. So okay. thanks for not saying everything right up front. Uh, so it's my understanding that Cornish is not a um, sort of classic, uh, what one would think about as a, a, a normal university, and I don't want to say the word normal, but I, I think you maybe embrace that, that you are a, a, an art school, a conservatory of sorts. Mm -hmm. And um, so tell us then what that first year as a musical theater major, BFA, correct? BFA musical theater major? Yes. Okay, so my first year as a BFA musical theater major heading to Seattle to go to Cornish, what does that first year look like for me? Well, um, as in most schools, a light, the focus on the first year is fundamental fundamentals. We, um, uh, in the course of that, we also think that um, uh, we want to, again, focusing back on this understanding of who you are as an artist. So it's like to where you are at the beginning, most college students aren't the exact same human being they are in their senior year that they were in their freshman year. We understand that, but we want to see where you are kind of at your base level. What is like, what is the artist you are as you enter in the college? So um, you're getting uh, uh, in the acting line, you're basically getting a, a text analysis class and then a uh, kind of improv acting class, which is a, a kind of building up your skills as a um, uh, your, your basic language of how we're going to approach um, theater through actor and the target and just kind of just building up your uh, initial acting fundamentals. In the singing department, there's a, a, a musicianship class, uh, and, and then you start your private voice training. In dance, there is a, a dance fundamentals. And, uh, and in addition to that, there's 
opportunity for some elective work, but it, again, it's like the main focus in the first year is to get kind of the the language that we're going to then expand upon through the second, third, and fourth years in uh, in in your classes and in production. So uh, you just mentioned dance fundamentals. What about for the student uh, that's coming with years and years of dance experience and if they're a really, really great dancer, are they going into the same dance class as all of the other students or is there an opportunity to level up? Well, we're, we're, we're discussing opportunities of how to figure out how we can level up in the classes. We have a, a vigorous dance department here that we want to be able to have students be able to take classes in if they have. We definitely have students that have come in that have gone going like, I'm at the basic level of dance. And we have students that come in who have said, I've been dancing for 10 years. Uh, and that's my and that's my lead. That's my that's the thing that is my wheelhouse. Um, we are we're uh, both trying to build ways. Again, we're this program is is the major is pretty new we're trying to build ways that they can they can level up into the dance department or that they, we can find ways that we can level them up within our dance theater curriculum uh again a lot of that times is in scheduling we're uh to be honest right now in the first year that first class is a is um uh, is a kind of core class uh that first that you that you would hit so it's a it's a lot of uh uh bar work and strengthening um it isn't kind mm -hmm. of the, you, you don't hit the ground at like kind of advanced in that first year and and also part of it is we want the first year students to dance together to, to kind of build their right. cohort and then from there figure out where they can uh grow and level yeah so in uh, a, a lot of BFA programs, your four years are sort of mapped out for you because it's just so jam-packed. It's basically a triple major when you're going into musical theater. Oh, yeah. um, is there the ability to customize your schedule at all uh, at, in the Cornish program, um, you know, if, if, with electives or cross-training in other departments or anything like that? Oh, definitely. We're, it, it, it is um, it, right now where we're at is the first year, not so much. There's a there's a little bit, but as the years progress, more and more opportunities uh, open up for uh, elective choices for to to uh, move into some of the other departments. Being an art school, we have some that are interested in design. Some people are interested in um, uh, uh, film work, and they they take those as electives. There's within our department, we have uh, very specific uh, uh, opportunities for or to take a class in. Uh, we have a class in burlesque that we teach um, for some of our third and fourth year students. We have a class in, we have clown, we have, you know, stage combat, different things that are like, that are ways that you can specialize. You can be um, um, certified. Yeah, there's, there's a, there's a track to certify yourself as a fight uh, choreographer. There's a, there are opportunities to kind of like discover your own kind of focus. Um, I, I, I created a course last year because my, one of my passions is writing musical theater. So we uh, created a very popular class in writing musical theater that, um, uh, you know, uh, has become a great source for a lot of our students because they come into our program saying, I am, I'm a generative artist uh, and I want to generate new content. That's, again, the kind of student that Cornish tr attracts is the student that doesn't want to just you know, be hired in the ensemble, but actually create the new musical. Um, in order to do that, we got to give them some training to do that. And, mm -hmm. and also then give them um, some opportunities. So we have, a, I, I, I have a couple students right now in the program who are, who are uh, beginning to kind of dial in, came in as musical theater majors, but they're gonna dialing in. And by the time they get to their fourth year, they're really focused on, on being a writer and creator of musical theater. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we mentioned that it, it, you know, Cornish is an art school. Um, what are the gen ed requirements uh, for BFA musical theater majors? Oh, I won't be able to be specific because it's not my really my 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 pocket. But sure. um, uh, yeah, there are definitely some H and S requirements because of the uh, the nature of accreditation. But it's like um, uh, I I don't think they're like I. I know for for a fact that there are some students that try to get them all done really quick and uh, like within the first second year and then others that have like <laughs> put them off and then they mm -hmm. build up they build up and have to come in in third and fourth year I but I don't have the specifics of what those classes are 
without the specifics, there are maths and sciences uh, and English classes that are offered at Cornish in addition yeah. to art school. They're just not a a large part of the curriculum, that's so to speak. No, but it's important. Is that correct in saying? Yeah, it's important. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course it's important. You're in college. My goodness. <laughs> uh, let, <laughs> let's talk things. about... <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so let's talk about the performance opportunities there. What uh, and and I know there's a lot to get into in the performance right. opportunities at Cornish. So um, let me ask a general question first, and then I'll sort of just let you go. Mm-hmm. Are all performance opportunities, like all of your musicals, all of your plays, are they open to everyone at the at at the college, no. or just the majors? No, um, uh, the 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 performance opportunities uh the performance uh in production uh are only open to second third and fourth year um uh, uh acting or works and musical theater majors um there have been some times in the past where we've gotten some uh music majors involved um but they have been specifically music majors that the department has recommended to us as like this person is very interested in also you know being um including in their training some interest in musical theater and so it's it is it is a little bit by like by recommendation for someone to be allowed but we have enough we have enough great students and we and we want to give them the opportunities within our program um but we do so so what's available i'm sorry say that again sorry about that i said so what's available so what's the what's the season quote unquote it's kind of hard at Cornish to say it's a season because there's so so many things but right. what's what's out there and available for performances in general we have um well, this is a really generalization but in the fall we have a uh, a a uh, main stage uh, play production we have a chamber musical going on both of those are the two main productions and in the spring those get switched a main stage musical and a chamber uh, uh, play usually a heightened language play um, and sometimes, sometimes depending on the choices they get done in the in the season, some of those will swap. But there's usually a mus- uh, a major musical and a play in in both fall and spring uh, semester. That is such a generalization. In addition to that, there's always a, a series of, of opportunities for students to perform in other student work. We've created a, a kind of a, a student curated um, uh, a program called the hen house where um where every like month or so that the around a topic then the students can curate an evening of entertainment and and it can be it can be like a a belters musical theater night or it could be a night of spoken word and and um kind of generative performance art mm-hmm. there's a wide variety that we've had on in those, and those again those are kind of student curated and student uh driven um uh, in addition to that, a lot of our uh, senior thesis projects uh, uh, are are performance based and that or director based, and so then that, that they put requests out for students too. So like our students can can if they want to be be very uh, active in production both in fall and spring term. Mm-hmm. And uh, how important in the musical theater department um, is film and on camera acting? In, in your program? Very interesting question, because I think it's evolving. I think um, before before COVID, obviously, we were kind of, you know, feeling stage is it. <laughs> and then uh, as we discovered uh, that there's a lot of opportunity to learn, uh, I, like many colleges, we pivoted to, to virtual work. And w- the way we really approached our, our virtual musicals was very much like doing a little mini musical, movie musical. Uh, and, um, mm-hmm. and, and the, the, the on-camera work was really important to us and not just like, like a zoom window musical, but just kind of really approaching the scene work, like film work. Uh, we learned a lot. Our students learned a lot. And we also saw the, the business moving into, um, on-camera auditions. And that became a huge part of our program. Our film, uh, our, our film department is great film department and is i'm really excited to see how how we can uh, collaborate more i mean they've always collaborated with the actors in the acting or works program but the musical theater program specifically uh we have many students who are interested in um 
in that kind of work and it just makes their work deeper. So I, we're not, we don't discourage all of those collaborations. We actually encourage them, you know, if they can, again, fit it into their schedule, which at times can be, like most colleges, can be a challenge. Right, right. Well, like, like we said, BFA is a triple major. I mean, there's lots to get in there. Um, the, this is also a, a longer list than most when I, I, I ask this question to colleges. So, um, but I want to talk about notable alum or faculty. And I know that the MT program is relatively new, but as far as Cornish goes, um, tell us a little bit about some success stories uh, of students or some other notable faculty that students will be working with while they're there. Well, I think, you know, um, it, uh, I think I'm, um, our, our faculty, uh, this, this really describes the fact that I'm saying our school is really seeking the individual and celebrating the individual. Our notable alumni in music, from musical theater, even before we had the major when it was a mem- musical theater emphasis, include uh, Jinx Monsoon from RuPaul's Drag Race. Who's like, there's, there's a <laughs> theater performer we have. We have uh, Don Daryl Rivera, who's playing Iago, who's played Iago for the, since the beginning in, a, in Aladdin on Broadway. We have uh, Sarah Porkalov, who has just 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 stirred up, you know, wonderful discussions in 1776. These are the artist activist innovators, ones that are challenging the norm, <laughs> ones that are really breaking down barriers, ones that are, you know, um, uh, absolutely unique performers. I feel like, you know, we 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 talk about our program, not filing away the things that make you wonderfully unique but actually celebrating the things that make you unique and i think those are three great examples of three completely different Mm -hmm. artists but artists that have like that have really celebrated there's nobody like them on the planet right and that's why i and yeah yeah, that's why i I love this sorry i love this program uh, because of the fact that that they don't you know i think if if they had gone to another school they would have had a different kind of success where they wouldn't have what they wouldn't have been able to celebrate the 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 kind of um the, di- the difference this this the special the thing that makes them special in another school might have been the thing that makes you stand out in a weird way and they want to take that away and i go like no 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 i we love that <laughs> mm. great so Seattle is a, a, a huge arts city. Um, I mean, there's so, so much to do in Seattle. Uh, is, you, you have, uh, you know, the big, um, the Fifth Avenue Theater there that that premieres these giant musicals before they head to Broadway. And you have all these other little um, um, fringe theaters uh, as well. Tell us sort of how Cornish, who's plopped right down in the middle of all of it, um, how does Cornish sort of weave itself into the fabric of the arts community there? Well, you can't throw a rock at any of those theaters without seeing a huge, huge population of Cornish uh, uh, alum and it, that not only work on stage, but <clears throat> backstage in the office. It's the, we, each one of the organizations here uh, has a direct connection to, to Cornish. Um, and, and, and part of that, because uh, like I've said before, the, the main focus since the beginning of Cornish hundred years ago has been generative work, which is being the creator of the work and not just the reciter of the work. Um, mm-hmm. the, uh, to be in this town that not only has the fifth Avenue that does, you know, the, the, the big new work, uh, uh, that directly goes to Broadway, things like Hairspray, Memphis, Shrek. Um, uh, but also we have the, in our, in our community, the village theater who would, who was a main developer on shows like next to normal and uh, million dollar quartet. And so there's just many, many, uh, and then there's the Intamon Theater, which was a main developer of Light in the Piazza. So we have uh, the rep also, along with the Fifth Avenue, the Seattle rep was one of the developers of Come From Away. So in the, the the variety of shows that have been developed within this community <laughs> is is wide. And, and we really have many, many uh, uh, theaters that are pipelines of new work, not just new plays, mm-hmm. but in new musicals. And we may be way over here on the other other coast from New York, but we're definitely uh, a great incubator 
of work here. And I think our students have been not only able to see all those shows getting built and see them develop, but um, uh, uh, for some of them, you know, they've been able to watch them kind of grow and flourish, you know, and yeah. Yeah, I was just there and in, uh, in Seattle a few weeks ago, and I was able to take my mom actually, and we went and saw the the Griswolds Broadway vacation, um, and we were there just a couple of nights before its official opening, um, and that was just such a great, a cool experience to to see these shows that are are going to to Broadway and that are, are going to have a life on there to be able to say, hey, I saw that before it was even on Broadway. Um, and that is a a giant musical there um, right. with with big names uh, that are are helping build these these musicals up, and that's a great opportunity to be in a city um, where that sort of serves as an incubator. And there's big Broadway producers coming there all the time, and and you're right, there's there's so many musicals that have come out of there. Um, the music scene in Seattle as well. I mean, Absolutely. it's just an exciting place to be. Yeah. Are students often working while they're still taking classes at Cornish? Or are they, are they getting out there and working while, before they've graduated? Um, as performers, uh, not usually just because again, the schedule is really hard in that regard. Um, we've, we have, um, uh, we, 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 we try to not, encourage <laughs> overloading yourself with outside performances while the schools are going of course that happens when a great opportunity comes around we don't want to squelch it a lot of times a student might take that outside performance and have that be their senior thesis so they they um they work their senior thesis around that outside performance which is uh which is is good in some ways but if the the challenge can be you get to your fourth year and so much of that fourth year is professional pivot. It's about taking the you as the artist and now, like, how do we launch you into the profession? Um, and so because of that, if, if you have a great opportunity, that's a great way of launching you into the profession, obviously. If it's second or third year, it's pretty discouraged just because we're there's enough work to be done here. And um, I'd say we say no to your second and third year, to be honest. In fourth year, and then it's it's more open in fourth year. We have three students right now in the in the fall term who are uh, doing projects right now outside of the college, and uh, they're just great opportunities. And 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 because of the this that's those specific students, we looked at their trajectory and said like, oh yeah, this is exactly what you should be doing right now, and and they they made it work. So. In what ways, uh, as students are completing their fourth year, in what ways does Cornish sort of help them with the transition into becoming professional performers? Um, is there a um, is there a showcase? Um, There's a showcase. Classes in the business or anything like that. Tell us about the showcase. Yeah, we do a we do a local showcase uh, uh, at the end of the fall term. Um, uh, Primarily because of the way I don't know how other regional theater markets but work, but in Seattle, the, definitely the the audition season. If we were to wait till the end of spring term, we are way we're like a year out for auditions for auditions for our students, um, mm -hmm. and and also our our cast the casting directors and and uh, artistic directors locally uh, know that that first week in December is a is a showcase week for Cornish students and they are they are excited about seeing the new you know crop of artists that are going to come and feed into their theaters and mm -hmm. many of our students get work from that showcase um it's a it's an important time but also part of that is also I don't think we just wait until the showcase those relationships are built earlier on we get we get a lot of the casting directors to come into our audition audition classes to talk to them so that they have relationships with these with these um uh, important people at the beginnings of their career now we have st some students that leave cornish and immediately go in leave to la or to new york or to other other major markets and um we encourage them to do research on on those things too but primarily a lot of our students uh, graduate, have relationships with local theaters, begin to build up a resume from lo with local work, and then when they feel ready, go from there rather than directly mm -hmm. from the four years. That's just what we've discovered has been that the habit. Seattle's a great place to live and work. We have a lot of theater going on, so a lot of people don't want to leave. 
uh, right after Cornish. Well, that that was going to be my question. Can you live uh, successfully support yourself with the amount of theater that's happening in Seattle and just never have to leave? Yes. <laughs> It's a great place. To, it's a great place to live and work. And partly because the fact that we have so much, so many theaters, I mean, and so much support of the theaters that we have here. Um, mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, we're rebuilding that because of, you know, after the last couple of years, but um, it's a very well educated and well supported city, arts supported city. I mean, when I, when I say educated, like arts educated city. So that like the audience is um, is thirsty for quality new work, and so our students come out, and if they're excited about that, that's great. Now, if they want to, there are many other opportunities in other cities that are like a little bit more. You know, our season is we here we do we're doing a golden age season of music band how to succeed and such and such and like and. That's they can go do that in other places. But, you know, I feel like I feel like the Seattle theater community, even at a place like the Fifth Avenue, you know, of their seven shows, mm -hmm. three are usually new work, two are usually two or three are usually new work. Some are like direct to Broadway, like the Griswolds experience, you know, are like are are trying to are are out of town tryouts. So if, if, if they're not like locally produced, because like, you know, out of the seven shows at the fifth, four are cast with local people. Um, and some of those are brand new works. So there are opportunities. Beautiful. It's a great place to be. Yeah. So let's switch gears now into the to the last section of the podcast, and and that is going to be talking about the uh, audition process. Um, and so the first question I have is: Does Cornish require a pre screen? Uh, at this point, no. We're talking about it at some point, but at this point, no. We will. Um, sure. Uh, we we go directly to the to the live audition. I think mm -hmm. part of the sign up is you, you you know you have application, but it's not like a it, you know, we don't right. pre screen before the live audition. Right, and you personally attend at least some of these auditions, correct? Uh, I'll be attending all of the live auditions this year. Great, and so tell us what are you looking for in the audition room, and and I mean both material what are the requirements and beyond the material what is it that's going to catch your eye um the the, the requirements for the material for the audition are uh we have a a couple uh, uh monologues that that you can choose from to do rather than bringing in your own um which i think is common uh, uh and then uh, uh i think it's two songs in the musical theater program uh two contrasting songs uh uh, in the audition, again, there will be a, a, a dance call, uh, uh, a little improv call. There's a the monologue and song combination, and then a little piece of the interview. And 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 to be honest, all of those play play a play a role in how we look at our 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 student selections. Really, what we're looking for is the corner student, the one that we think is um, is you the students that are unique, the. I will, I will be honest with you, the, the, the shiny, shiny kids, we go, I don't think you're going to want to be here. If you're like, if it's all polished and nothing underneath, I don't think we're going to, you're going to thrive in our, in our um, school. The ones that go, that the, the ones that, if you come to our audition and you show us who you are and you peel away a little bit of that veneer and show us your heart uh, and show, and show us your passion, I think there's a place for you here. And I think there's a place mm -hmm. for you in the in the profession, and that's part of why I think you know, um, I, I we can see the kid, we can see the kid a mile away who's going to say yes to Cornish, because oh, because we that's an we, interesting we go, statement. It, I, I see we go like you're gonna you're gonna love this school, and we see the kid that go like, yeah, you're probably not going to choose us to the kid. I mean, I'm being honest because we we say like I I think what you want is kind of the the, and I'm not putting these schools down. You, what you want is that kind of like, like regimented, you know, you need mm -hmm. to belt a D, you need to kick, kick the side of your ear, you need to do this, you know, the, the, those kind of training programs, if that's, if that's what that student wants, there's a place for them. Our school, yeah. again, if you look at the stu students that have come out here, come out of our, our school, and, and I'm, I just mentioned the three that are 
right now on Broadway making noise. <laughs> there are many other students from, that have corners training that have gone on and are working in regional markets and doing really, really well because they're like, there's nobody like them. Mm -hmm. um, let's step back for a second and, and address two parts of the musical theater audition that are a little bit different than what students are probably used to hearing. The first one, um, you give them monologues to choose from to bring in tell us what the thought is behind that and and what do you say to students that that maybe that just those aren't the right monologues for them like what, what tell us about that right we are and the, the thing the one the thing about those those monologues they might be like choose either one and these might they're they're not gender specific uh your, your students the students can come in can come in and uh and um uh, be able to uh, we know those monologues really well. We know they're good pieces. We are able to direct them, the student, and see uh, adjustments that the student makes within the audition. And we can see, uh, we learn a lot from that. A lot of times those coached materials, which are great for other auditions, tell you a, a bunch of other different factors in the audition process. But the thing about those, those two selected uh, monologues is that um, it, it gives us an, an even playing field to see the, the students against each other, to see the students uh, make choices, to see what kind of choices they'll make with uh, within that material, and then how they make adjustments in the room. Hmm. So you're you're just trying to get them all, like you said, you're leveling the playing field by having them all do the same material. That's interesting. Um, uh, and I know very stressful for some of my students, if I'm honest, when they saw that. Yeah. But I think it's good to sort of throw them a curveball. It's good. Um, and, because yeah. then, like you said, they're stepping out of that overcoached material, which I always stress with my kids. Like, stop stop choreographing your monologues down yeah. to I'm going to move my hand on this word every time. So I actually think that's kind of great. Right. And I also think the challenge is sometimes with the... The, the material that comes in, I'm not saying you coach them this way, Tim, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that there's, there's some students that come in and go like, look how clever I am. And look how that, <laughs> this, this is a funny piece. And I go like, I, but that doesn't tell me anything about who you are as an actor. Right. But and I, it means that like you chose a, fun, a, a, a monologue with a funny punchline. Hiding behind the writing. Right, hiding behind yeah. the writing. Then it's, it's not it's not you that's being funny. It was a joke that was written that you're reciting. I get, I totally get that, and I, I try to drive home to my kids so often that a comedic monologue does not necessarily mean that you're making the people behind the table fall out of their chair laughing. It just means it's not a serious monologue, like a lighthearted monologue. And the same with a dramatic monologue. You don't need to make them cry. It just means it's not a funny monologue. Um, and it, no, so so honest? many times, like to me, to us, it's yeah. are you honest? Are you, are you playing your target? Are you are you are you um, trying to affect the individual you're doing the monologue toward? Are you um, uh, are 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 you actually playing an objective? I know that seems so so mm -hmm. obvious, but it's like can often be, you know, uh, not there. Mm -hmm. Right. And you mentioned uh, an improv um, a section of it. Now, of course, improv means you don't get advance notice as to what you're supposed to be saying or doing. But tell us um, what that looks like. How is there an improv section of their audition? Well, like I said, a lot of the uh, a big portion of the Cornish program is generative work. And so it's like just to get people in the room, whether or not whether or not we can get a group people in like a dance call and have them move together and respond together. Again, I don't think it's theater games as much as it is just a chance for us to uh, to get an example of our generative work that we do in class uh, and have it be um, have it be in uh, see response in the room. We learn a lot in those in those in that span of time. It's like a I I, I want to I, when I when we say improv, I don't want you to think like oh fun improv games. Look, you know this is a box. What is this? Uh, you know, like I, that doesn't really teach me anything about who you are as an actor. But seeing how you respond to other people in the room, listening and responding in in, in real time is uh, are is a great exercise in just seeing the students that are receptive to that. And again, it goes back to that we are seeing then students start start to target an an, an objective, start to play towards uh, an action. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, I, the, the fun thing for me about auditions 
too, in the live auditions is seeing the students that I go, you may not get it here, but I see the potential that you will. <laughs> you know, the same thing with those given monologues that we give them. It's like, if they don't have to be, they don't, we're not expecting to see opening night performance, but I want to see if they're on their way. <laughs> or if I see they can say they have the sliver of it, the point of going to college is to to bring some of those elements to, to build you as a better actor. If We're not expecting you to come in to that high school audition already ready to win your tone. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. So is there a target number for an incoming class size that you're looking for for MT kids? I, um, I, I don't even know. I, I, to be honest, to be honest, Kim, I don't know. We've like, you know, the, the numbers have changed so much um, through COVID and have built, uh, we're back up where we were pre, uh, pre-COVID, but I don't know what the target is for next year. I know we're, we're right now uh, with the amount of applications we've had, we're way ahead of, uh, of where we were post, uh, pre-COVID, which I think is exciting. It's mm-hmm. both, both exciting for the, for the program, but also exciting, uh, exciting nationally just to see how many, uh, how many uh, students are interested in right. musical theater. I mean, there was a fear because it was such a, it was put on hold that people would like lose their interest in it. And I don't think it's going away. I think it's evolved yeah. like every other art form, but um, the passion that students have to train in musical theater is still there. And that is thrilling. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're even seeing new, program starting again at colleges i actually i don't think that ever really stopped but there are new bfa programs popping up seems like every year right why that richard uh the the reason why that is because students want it yeah yeah students want it absolutely so it's been so great to sit and down and, and talk to you and learn more about the Cornish's new musical theater program. Tell us um my last question always tell us something that you're looking forward to I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing the students that are graduating, uh, that graduated last year and, and graduating this year. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how they're going to change the art form. I see how they have the potential to do it. I'm excited to see how they take uh, where musical theater is going and blow it up. I always say I like I think I I don't want to train our students to be in the musical theater that existed in 2005. I want to train them to be in the musical theater that's going to exist in 2030. Um, and it's oh. it's grow it's growing and it's evolving and it's like the and it's challenging people in different ways. And so I want our students to be ready for that. That's what I'm hoping. Very well said. Great. Uh, so if students want to learn more about the Cornish College Musical Theater Program or parents, uh, what's the best way to get in touch? Well, you can go to our uh, go to our college website, Cornish College of the Arts. It's, I think it's, uh, is it Cornish? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly what our Cornish College website is. I should. It's cornish.edu. Thank you. I was going to say that, but then I go like, oh, I'm going to get it wrong. Um, cornish.edu. <laughs> That's Cornish.edu. Awesome. Richard, I thanks so much. I failed on knowing us. my and website. Okay. <laughs> I won't tell your boss. I won't. Uh, <laughs> all right. So great to sit and chat with you today. We hope to see you around here again real soon. Thanks so much. Great. Right. Thank you, Tim. Bye-bye. Bye bye. For more information on the exciting training, workshops, and resources we have to offer at the College Audition, please visit us online at www.thecollegeaudition.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube.